Are you a deviant? You know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer programs, laugh at the stupid shit people do, and revel in anything adult? Well, you found your people. Join us as we crack open the door to the padded cell and release the insanely stupid, the weirdly wonderful, and those who choose to live outside societal norms. We'll delve into the strange, the macabre, the sexy, and the outrageous. So if you're a deviant, then you have your place with us in the padded cell. Hello, gang, and welcome to episode 31 of the Pater Cell podcast. 31. 31. It's mad, isn't it? Mm. It's just that exciting, though, because uh, it's just going nuts all around the world. It is. Patreons have gone nuts. Facebook's gone super nuts. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram's gone nuts, but Instagram have been cons, to be honest. They keep, like, saying that I can't post stuff and I can't monetize shit because I say fuck all the time. I know they got banned off Instagram on... Tuesday night. Did you flash a flap? No, I was watching Slash. <laughs> Are you a flashing your flaps at Slash? And I post, <laughs> posted a video of Slash doing his thing, which is that good. And I just put on a Slash with the big dick energy. Oh. And they, they were going to ban me for saying Slash has got big dick energy. <laughs> it's fact though. <laughs> I was like, look at him. Of course he has. Of, of all the things you post. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, it wasn't even on. like Slash has got a big dick. It was... <laughs> Big dick energy. I imagine Slash have a big dick though. I do. You can't have hair Love like that. Arms. And oh. yeah, arms and play the guitar the way he does and not have a big dick. Anyway, it will make me moist. Ooh. All right, I just need to note that Jacob, the margin director, has just closed his door. He mustn't want to hear about Slash's big dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably because I've, I've said lots of swear words I mean, in we the say first lots few minutes. Of inappropriate stuff. We do, we do. Or it was the burping. Well, we got the burping out there before we started rolling. Out, yeah. yeah. So just before we started rolling, um, we normally do a one, two, three, four, and I just went <laughs> down the microphone. And um, Dylan was very impressed. Yes, very impressed. That was my new sound check. <laughs> <laughs> Closely followed by your burp. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan, did you know it's National Dylan Day today? Yeah. Yeah. National Dylan Day? Yes. Did you not know this? Shout out all the Dylans of the world. Yeah, well, actually, it's not today that the episode's going out it's today that we're recording yeah. so we're recording on the 4th of April today so we're two weeks in advance for this one and yeah you found that it was National Dylan Day it's not spelt the way your Dylan's spelled but uh, you know Dylan I mean, it's the it, English spelling it's yeah. coming from the echo so yeah. it's definitely true I looked it up after you sent the thing over mm. I fact checked just to make sure it wasn't the echo <laughs> telling the echo, a joke just thing. shit as usual yeah. What I thought it might have been was like an article that was released on the 1st of April saying the 4th of April was National Dylan oh, no. Day because I thought there can't be a National Dylan Day. Who wants a National Dylan Day? When's National Dylan Day? I don't Nancy even Day? want a National Dylan Day. <laughs> <laughs> Too much attention. How are you going to celebrate? Yeah. Um, get all the Dylans. Jacob's got to buy you lunch. Oh, yes. Do you hear that, Jacob? You have to buy me lunch. It's National Dylan's Day. Yeah, he doesn't care. No. He doesn't care one bit. You could just say it was National Dylan Day just you to get free lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 4th of April, National Dylan Day. It'll forever be National Dylan Day for me now. We'll never forget this. I know, yeah. But actually, this is going out on the 18th of April, two weeks from today. And have you ever heard of Lorraine Warren? Nope. Have you heard of Lorraine Warren? Lorraine Warren is from, I know her from the film Paranormal Activity, not Paranormal Activity, um, The Conjuring. Is yes. she in that film? She yeah. certainly is. So Ed and Lorraine Warren uh, were paranormal investigators uh, years ago and um, Lorraine Warren actually died oh, on the 18th I of April. I didn't know that was the name. In 2019, you yeah. So you've probably seen the film Annabelle, the, the Conjuring Annabelle doll, type, yeah. yeah. Well, they actually um, owned the Annabelle doll and they claimed that, mm -hmm. it was that it was haunted or possessed. And uh, they're also famous for investigating Amateurville, uh, the Enfield haunting, yeah. amongst loads of others. So she was a medium and paranormal investigator. There's a lot of people who are not too sure about mm -hmm. them, to be fair. I'm a bit on the fence. Some of the stuff that they came up with, I'm like, yeah, I'm totally convinced. Other stuff, I don't know whether they just um, faked a little bit just to, like to sensationalise. You know, rather than yeah. just like, yeah, that's an orb or that's a noise. They've gone, it's a noise and the demon's making it and they've conjured a demon. <laughs> you know, it just felt it just felt a little bit too much. But yeah, very, very famous uh, yeah. parallel investigators. And she died mm -hmm. in 2019 on the 18th of April. So there you go. Uh, they actually formed the New England Society for Psychical Research in the 50s, the NESPR, and they travelled the world investigating. I can't quite fancy that job, you know. 
be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. You see, uh, I am a believer, but I also look for um, other reasons for the yeah. noises or whatever that I've, I've seen here or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I try and be practical. So I'd love to be a paranormal investigator and just go around with me, EMF reader. Yeah. <laughs> I just love a gadget. <laughs> a little proton pack. <laughs> oh my God, Nance Rice. Right. Have you ever seen them um, face panel, uh, no face, panel fence painting packs? It's like a backpack that you put on, you fill it with paint and it's got like a probe. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, you know, you, you shower the fence yeah. basically. Yeah. Spray. Well, Jimmy's got more of these things. And he was out spraying the fence. And I just had, I just had the overwhelming urge to start singing Ghostbusters. <laughs> He's in a car. Ghostbusters. <laughs> he did a very good job of the fence, but I mean, imagine Jim. And he also, I think, he also had that soup thing that he wears, the boiler suit, his overalls, his overalls thing, Oof. and his backpack. He was proper Ghostbusting. Yeah. Love yeah, it. yeah. Speaking of Ghostbusters, do you know that Dan Aykroyd's really, really into paranormal stuff? I'm going off. I'm on. I'm, <laughs> sorry, I said Lorraine Warren. You know Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, yeah. Do you know he's really into paranormal stuff? He's like proper, proper paranormal mm. bossing. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I don't. I didn't know that actually. Doesn't okay. surprise me. He seems eccentric. <clears throat> yeah, but he's really, really, really knowledgeable as well. And it's not just like ghosts. It's like you know UFOs and um, you know cryptids and all that kind of thing. He's on a program on telly, and he's just really, 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 really knowledgeable. And um, as listening to we can be weirdos. I keep plugging this. I'm gonna have to contact Dan, who does the um, present the yeah who presents the uh, podcast because I keep mentioning him. Um, but yeah, Dan Aykroyd on, and he was telling all these mad weird tales. And there's one in particular. I have got a bit of time. I'm going to do this. Fuck it. Um, and he said, it's one of these instances that you just can't explain. And he was filming this show in America and he was about to interview this woman who'd um, had a UFO sighting and she was like well into it. And it was going with this big like, yep, yeah, I've seen this proof and all that. Did the first segment of the show, went outside for a quick fag. And as he's standing there having his fag, out of the blue completely, Britney Spears calls him. And he's like, Britney Spears and he's looking at the phone completely bewildered as he's looking like that there's a car just over the way like a black I'm, I'm thinking sedan you know like yeah. government type thing and there's two guys standing outside the car with denim jackets on so they weren't men in black but just standing there looking at him looking directly at him as he's perplexed wondering why Britney Spears of all people is phoning him at that very point so he's looking at the phone he goes uh, hey Britney and then when he looks up the car's gone and the guys are gone and there's no way they could have just gone mm -hmm. in that split second She's like, that's a bit weird. Anyway, finished the call with Brittany and it was she wants his help on a show. He went back in and the uh, the producers of the show said, right, we're stopping there. We're pulling the plug on this right now. And he went, what? And uh, he said, yeah, the, the ladies that you were interviewing has changed their mind. She doesn't want to do it. And actually, we're, they were halfway through the show and they pulled it off her there and then. So he's like, ooh, these guys in the car. I wonder if they were like, you know, government officials. Or aliens. Didn't like the fact that she was about to spill the beans on yeah. some UFO sighting. And they've got onto the bosses and said, pull the plug on that or you're dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where my mind was going. <laughs> I love things that you just can't explain. Yeah. Like but he's got loads of little stories like that, yeah. not just his own, but other people's stories. And I say, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, just look him up because he's, he's like, there's internet sites and all sorts yeah. of stuff on, on there. Um, but also, We Can Be Weirdos, he does get interviewed uh, by Dan on there and he's super, super interesting guy. Dylan's on it, he's Googling. Yeah. You have, you ever, have you ever seen his vodka? Yes, the Skullhead the Vodka. Skullhead Vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've actually got one on our bar. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had the Skullhead Vodka since about 2015 and I've never opened it. And uh, it was gifted to me um, by um, my submissive, who I've mentioned mm -hmm. before, who passed away. And so I've not been able to bring myself to open it because he bought it for me. Yeah, yeah. But it's so getting it to the point now it's starting to evaporate. <laughs> so I'm like, I've got to drink this stuff before it's, it's completely gone. But um, yeah, he does the, the Skullhead Vodka. Maybe you can open it for our, our friends leaving. Oh, yes. Yes. Do a little toast, get him rotten. Well, he drinks vodka as well. Mm. He doesn't really drink very often, though. One double vodka could be on his back. Well, <laughs> if it's going to be your last party. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I've, 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 I've veering off on one there. Right. So I've had a few people messaging me saying, um, they like near the intro, are you a deviant? You know, you know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer <laughs> programmes, laugh me, at the stupid shit people do and revel in anything adult. Jamie and Ryan do this to each other all the time. Well, you found your people. 
<laughs> Join us as we crack open the door. Anyway, so you've already heard it once. Shouldn't need me to hit, say, say it again. But we've had a few people saying they love the intro and wherever they are, they actually say it with me. <laughs> And they actually, they try and do it in my voice. So there's like Australians and Americans up there trying to do our intro in my Scouse accent. <laughs> so I've got to hear this, whether it's in the Scouse accent or not. So what I'm thinking, right, I'm going to ask our Patreons before I go on. Our, our Patreons at the moment, we've got like 78 Patreons. And uh, what I'm going to do for you all, when we get to 100, I'm going to close that tier. And because you are um, all with us from the start, day one us, I'm going to promote you all to the top tier for nothing as a little gift from us. Uh, and as part of that, you're going to get a phone number and you can WhatsApp us. You can WhatsApp us messages, pictures, little stories and things that you might want to share with the masses. But what I would like you to do, because by the time this goes out, you will have the phone number. Um, if you are that way inclined, I would love for you to do your own version of our introduction and I'm going to mash it up. <laughs> Did we ever share the one that me and Ryan filmed? No. When we were really, really, really drunk. No, that was at one of the staff parties, wasn't it? In fact, it was the last staff party Christmas I couldn't party, go because yeah. I wasn't there. Oh, I wasn't well. You were Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you uh, you did the the introduction, didn't you? Really badly. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were quite good actually. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we done one excellent take. Yeah. But Mabel was filming it, and the knobhead wasn't filming us. She was filming herself, just going. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, go away! <laughs> You're doing like a little and selfie the recording. And then we just went to shit, and we couldn't do it. Ah, see, that's what alcohol does for you. Yeah. So if you fancy um, recording that introduction yourselves, send it over. These are the Patreons who are going to get the phone number. Uh, send it over and have a little listen and a laugh. And um, I'm going to put some of them together and do like a little mashup of all different people's little bits and make it like one long. I'll get my auntie to do one. So you need to we give need your auntie to give a, little, a little shout out. Go on, yeah. go on. Tell us all so, about your auntie. Um, last night, me and me siblings went for dinner. Um, we got invited to dinner by our American family, um, who we haven't seen for years. Mm. But my great auntie Lil is like in her eighties, and she's doing a final farewell tour. That'll be her, her last visit. Oh, final farewell tour! Yeah, she's she's too poorly to like okay. come back over, um, but she wanted to see where she grew up and like you know all her family one last time. Um, but the really fun auntie oh. was like, you know, a couple of wines in and she said... Fun auntie. Yeah. She was like, I need to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I haven't asked you about where, because I don't want to just assume, but I don't know who knows. She said, but I do watch the podcast. <laughs> 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 and I was like, for fuck's sake, you can't go anywhere. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, so she watches us. So did she just find us randomly or did she see a link from one of your profiles or no, something? No, because all like my spicy profiles have nothing to do with like me normal. Mm. I mean, she's just on my normal Facebook. So she's on my just Instagram, found us. But we don't share anything on there. So <sighs> See, I'm just, there she is, I'm just very pleased now that there's a lady no. over in America who happens to be related, but she's just found us. Yeah. And she was like, she loves it, thinks it's dead God, wants to know all about it. Um, and then her brother Michael she was like me and Michael can laugh about this shit but we don't tell Jodie <laughs> <laughs> is Jodie a prude? J Jodie's the um, the strict one. Oh, right okay so, there's always one of those yeah. isn't there so they're, we don't tell Jodie <laughs> you see people think that we're the black sheep because we're the weirdos yeah. but actually it's the people that aren't weirdos who yeah. are the black sheep we are the weirdos mister so um, so what's your auntie's name? Patty so I have Patty and um, I believe you sent me a message that I didn't reply to. I don't remember receiving it. But yeah, she was I'm a very, drunk very, and she was trying sorry. to tell me. <laughs> she was just inviting herself on. She was like, I, I've been in Liverpool for a week. I could have filmed with you. Yeah, yeah she cut off. No. She's, <laughs> she's currently flying back, so. Uh, no, it would have been nice to meet her. Yeah. It would have been really nice to meet her. Yeah, but she um, she went on to the messages. She sent you a picture of a cock cake on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, but I didn't get it. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you their profile. Okay, yeah. Because I looked last night, didn't I? But Instagram, Instagram went down a bit last night yeah. and Facebook and that. I was fretting. I put a reel out. I've had like 70 views on it. I normally have like 70,000. <laughs> it's because that went down. Cunts. Anyway. So hello to our Patreons, Casey, Sarah. Now I can't say a surname. V-O-C-E. Voce. Voce. Voss. Uh, QL, Philippa, Beth, Marielle and Rogine. They're our latest Patreons. So hello. Hello to everyone. And uh, thank you for just joining our chaos. 
It is chaos. It is chaos. If I think the WhatsApp group will be chaos. Oh, can you imagine? Well, I've been putting it off a little bit just because <laughs> of time constraints, yeah. really. And I just know as soon as I launch this, it's just going to go a little bit We chat enough me. shit between you, me and Ryan. Oh my God, can you imagine? With all, what, 70 odd deviants on the WhatsApp. Yeah. No, it's all good. It's all yeah. good then. And you know, if, if, I, if I can't read your messages and I, I can't, Whatever. I just say, sorry guys, but I'm, I'm busy. I'm muting you for a bit. <laughs> I'm muting you. I'm muting my own group. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Right. So today's story. <clears throat> um, it's off the back of Toko. You know, <laughs> the uh, Japanese guy who yep. uh, lives in a dog suit once a yep. month. Not a border collie. Not a border collie. Fucking hell, the amount of people like, you do know it's not collie. a border collie. But when you actually look at it, he actually says border collie yeah. himself. So, you know, he was ripped off, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a border collie suit that he got, even though he ordered it. What was it, like 30 grand or something? It was very expensive, yeah. wasn't it? Really, really expensive. So I had a couple of people contact me. Uh, well, I had a lot of people contact me about Taco, to be honest with you. Uh, we've actually got a picture of Taco, I think, in our, um, in our little picture stash if you can just flash one up so everybody knows what we're talking about in case you didn't see that that reel. was not taco <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I haven't got taco on this one but I'll put it in place oh okay I thought I sent it over to you sorry that's okay um, right so basically he's a, he's a Japanese guy who once a month dresses up in this amazing dog suit and he behaves like a dog and we established that he sniffed bums and mm-hmm. all the rest of it which I found hilarious and some people were saying um I think he's not just like a pet player. He's not a fetishist. Um, I think he's a therian. Have you heard of a therian? No. So it's T H E R I A N. Therian. Have you heard of a therian? I have heard of therian, yeah. Oh, have you heard of a therian? I'm on the internet a lot. Yeah, you're he a fucking kinks to you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dylan has got a fat life profile. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tickle. <laughs> I am the goat. <laughs> <laughs> the screaming goat. Got that goat in me. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about Therians. Uh, I didn't think you'd know what it was because actually I didn't know what it was. Um, I'd sort of heard the word and not really understood it, to mm-hmm. be honest. So, I'm going to take us back to basics and just go over uh, what this is and um, what it's not, more importantly. So a Therian basically is a person who identifies as and with an animal. Okay. So as and with is really important. Um, So they not only um, believe that they're an animal, but they act like an animal as well. And I'm going to go into this quite deeply, but let's just take a little step back and look at what they're not First of all, and this is what came up in discussion quite a lot because people were like, oh, he's just a, he's just into pet play mm. or he's a furry. And actually people say, no, he's not. He's neither of those things. And I'm like, mm, OK, let's drill down what the difference is between these. So this isn't necessarily a Lady C episode, but I am talking about kink and fetish a little bit and then going off onto what Therians are. So pet play, um, as we know, uh, it's it's a BDSM activity on the in the broader sense because often you have a pet and a handler. Mm-hmm. So the pet would be in the, like a submissive position, yeah. if you like, or a bottom position, and the handler would be in the top position. Sometimes there's bondage involved, um, <clears throat> and you know, um, giving orders out, role play, and that kind of thing. So it is seen as a BDSM activity. Uh, sometimes they'll wear paws that restrict their movement mm-hmm. of the hands uh, on both their the hands and their feet. Um, it's very common in the gay community, but yep. we do have people uh, from other communities taking part in pet play. Um, but as we know, because we run gay events in our venue, pet play is massive yeah. in the gay events. <clears throat> Excuse me. And pet play outfits um, can be anything from um, a harness with the, the paws and like a little snout maybe yeah. to full on Dalmatian latex, yeah. basically. Um, and while they're in that outfit, they will play into the role. So you don't believe they are dogs, yeah. cats, piggies, horses, whatever it is. They're acting into that role. It's part of their kink. It's part of their fetish. And very often, pet players can involve sexual activities, mm-hmm. but they don't always. Sometimes it is literally pet and handler. But some, especially in the gay community, uh, it can lead on to sexual activity. But it's not a given. And that isn't necessarily why people get into pet play. 
Um, and we do have some pictures of Pep Play Dylan. Um, let me just get my own ones up so I know what I'm telling you. So Pep Play One, please. Okay, so we've got a lady here. We can see she's got the paws um, there. She's got the snout and the ears and stuff. Uh, and she's quite sexualised. Um, I don't know if she's gay, it's a very straight sexy or whatever. Pop, isn't it? It's a very sexy pup. We don't really see loads and loads of sexy pups, no. really. These sorts of pictures are normally just seen just for for enjoyment, for just yeah. pictures. We don't really see these in real life that much in clubs, uh, especially ladies. Yeah. You do see this in the gay community, but again, I think she's more sexualised than what we're yeah. used to, really. Um, but, you know, this is a thing and, you know, some people do do dress this way. Um, also, we've got um, the Pet Play 2, please. So this is more what we're used to seeing. I mean, this is quite extreme. But is this the one that was on that documentary? Yeah. But we've had one just like this in our club, yeah. and um, I think he won Pet Pride. It's like there's a Pet Pride, believe it or not. They got their own flag and everything's boss got a big paw on it, um, mm. and he won the the Pet Pride competition, and he had a full Dalmatian outfit on. So I don't think it's exactly the same guy, but he had that outfit on. She looks awfully shocked. <laughs> she looks very uncomfortable, doesn't she? <laughs> I, I'm trying to read what her face is saying here. Help. Yeah. It's like she's just been brought I'm in. I'm a prisoner. She doesn't even know who he is. Blink twice. Yeah. So for the people who aren't watching this, who are listening instead, so we've got a, a very uncomfortable looking lady <laughs> on a, a regular sofa with a regular bookshelf. And, and a little piggy bank. And a little piggy bank, yeah. And she's got a person next to her, I'm assuming a guy, but I don't know, dressed in full latex Dalmatian outfit and he's got very cute ears that's turn over on the on the top and he's smiling he's having a lovely time she's questioning her life nice right now outfit. maybe she plays as a cat <laughs> <laughs> she'd turn his eyes out if that was the case <clears throat> so that's sort of like the Siamese cat on the aristocrats yeah. so this is sort of where my mind goes with pet play it's more your role playing into it and you wouldn't necessarily have sex in that outfit it's more look at me looking fabulous in my yeah. latex Dalmatian outfit they like the smell the feel of the outfit mm -hmm. the closeness on the skin and all that um but we do have people, not just as dogs, we've had horses, we've had little piggies, we've had lots of cats. Um, but the dogs tend to go all out, don't they? Yeah. Now, so I need to be very clear that people that undertake pet play don't identify as that animal. Mm -hmm. They just role play into it. It's a kink, it's a fetish, it's fun. Um, and when they take all that off, that's it. It's the end of that yeah. role play. So we've got another another category called fairies. So there's a picture there, um, fairies, Dylan, please. Okay. So completely different to our original picture. Um, this is something that you'd maybe see. Like, oh, a, a, is that a cow at the back? Yeah. A rainbow cow? Yeah. That's a bit of me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rainbow cow. I fucking love cows. Do you? Yeah. What is it about cows? It's my favourite animal. Is it? Yeah. Why? Just love them. Haven't they got like them? seven bellies or something, cows? Yeah. You obviously don't identify as a cow. You've barely got one belly. I do have udders. <laughs> <laughs> I am known to have been milked. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know, maybe I am a cow. <laughs> Fucking hell! That escalated. <laughs> so you've got udders. Okay! Um, who was I? <laughs> Fairies. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, these people are in full um, fairy outfits. Now, some of them you can see, I might, there's a fox there, there's looks like a bull, a few cats, but some of them aren't really anything in particular. And that's because, um, now, not all fairies dress like this. Um, they don't identify as, they identify with, it's like an avatar almost and some people get their own fairy outfits made in how they see themselves or how they want to be mm -hmm. seen not necessarily as a particular type of animal it could just be like a, a character like a cartoon character yeah. or whatever it's now like fairies are not um it's not a fetish they're like a sub community subculture yeah. of people so they wouldn't necessarily um go to fest events dressed like this um they wouldn't necessarily you know each other up like this um, they just enjoy wearing these outfits and what the difference is between fairies I think and people that undertake pet play 
pet players try and reenact animal mannerisms. Yeah. So they'll you know, do this when they're licking their ears as cats yeah. and sniff arses if the dogs and stuff like that. Whereas fairies, they often bring human characteristics into their fairy mm-hmm. persona. So like you see in Disney, yeah. So you or you know some theme park where you've got somebody dressed up in a fairy outfit. They they wave like a human would it's like do. Like buttons. Yeah. So that's that's what fairies tend to do. So <clears throat> now not all fairies have got outfits like this because they're very 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 expensive. Some of these have got like LED lights in their eyes. They've some of them have got like air conditioning on it's the a bit inside scary, because that one on they're the end, dead 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 hot. Some of these people are spending fifteen twenty thousand dollars on these things. So not everybody can afford them. So what do fairies do who can't afford these outfits? We've seen them. They'll sometimes wear like little ears. Yeah. Now, not all fairies wear ears. And there's a lot of crossover. So I'm saying here that fairies don't, they're not into BDSM, blah, blah, blah. But they're still people at the end of the day. So they might still be into kink. Yeah. And they might choose, if they're feeling that way inclined one day, to go and, you know, hump a fairy bull. I don't know. But... <sighs> Um, that's not the sole intention. The sole intention is just enjoy escaping into this avatar, mm-hmm. if you like. And I quite like that idea. And they have like almost like Comic Cons for fairies. There was a furry con in Liverpool. Was there? And I was walking to work. It was like, before I was here. And there was just an entire gaggle. I was, wow. I was buzzing. I was like, yeah. fair play. It looks amazing, class. doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, apparently, they're very uncomfortable to wear. So you know, they're quite dedicated to wear yeah, these they, things. I mean, it must get hot, mustn't it? But they're heavy. As well, they're hot, they're heavy. It's it's not Especially like a sealed if they're good quality as well. Yeah, be, they are. Yeah. You know, they spend a lot of money on these things. Like, at the dragon. end of the day, they're representing them, their, their avatar, their yeah. persona. So it it is good quality because they want to be seen and taken yeah. seriously as the avatar. I think it looks a lot of fun personally, yeah. um, and I'd love to go along and see, you know, what they get up to, and I'd love to see them, you know, waving and what doing would you that. Be? What would I be? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. As a fairy. I mean, if I was going to do pet play, I'd have to be a dog. Yeah. Because I just love dogs. But I'm not into pet play. But as a fairy, I don't know. I think I'd have to be, like, maybe a dragon or There's something. There's a dragon there on the end. Is there? A little blue one. Ah! I've actually got a Mother of Dragons t-shirt from Game of Thrones. I'm quite partial to a dragon. I love dragons. Oh, my God. Wait till I tell you this, right? Jimmy's a right fucking dickhead. <laughs> the other day. <laughs> the other day. He's flicking through Google, you know, and he's like, fuck off. And I was like, what? He went, they found a fossil of a dragon. And I'm like, they don't exist. They can't. Aff-. So we showed this picture and I went, fossils don't look like that. That looks like a dragon. That looks like a mummified dragon. That's not a fossil. And you go, no, look. And there's these Chinese people all right, like rubbing down the thing. And I went, was it it's 1st of April, you knobhead. <laughs> He was totally taken in. And I'm like, <laughs> how'd you get to 58? And one, forget that it's like 1st of April. And two, that actually dragons existed. No, they didn't, Jim. <laughs> they didn't exist. So there isn't a fossil of one. Anyway, sorry, Unless Jim. Unless there you. is. <clears throat> uh, so I would probably be a dragon, I think, if I was going to be a fairy. Mm. I'd have to I'd have to go the full nine yards. I would have to have like, you know, pyrotechnics and everything going Scales on. Scales and well, Scales. You can breathe fire. I can breathe fire. Well, I haven't breathed fire for a little while. I probably set but myself on fire nowadays. <laughs> we need to practice. We can that. practice tonight. I'm doing mine. Oh, I don't know about tonight. I need to build myself up for it. Read me notes. Can have a little go. Don't know. Notes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember any notes. <laughs> they, they actually have different words for the type of animals as furries. So anything that's a lizard is actually a scaly. A scaly. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Are you reading this? So you'd be a scaly. I, See, did, I... I did know this. That's why I'm looking it up. But I'm not saying. Okay. You see, he's just outing himself here, isn't he? <laughs> what would you be, Dylan? I do like the lizards. I'd probably go, probably go wolf. I like wolves. Wolf. I have a wolf tattoo. Do you? Yeah, on my leg. I didn't know your tattoos. Yeah, on my legs. I wanted, oh, okay. uh, There's a stage where I wanted to be a teacher, so they're all on my legs so yeah. far. But I'm going to start my arms soon, I think. Yeah, you may as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck that. Now teaching aspiration fuck off. Fuck oh, imagine you're much better be doing teacher. what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, oh God, imagine teaching kids. <laughs> no. All my kids, right, if I was a teacher, they'd either be in detention or they'd all be in, in the corners facing <laughs> the wall. <laughs> I'd be in detention with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be. I mean, I've I've lectured adults, but adults choose to be there. They pay to yeah. be there. Kids don't want to be there. Right. So 
Now, these fairies, I don't know whether either of you have seen anything in the news. Um, there's been some speculation that there's kids in schools who are saying they identify as a fairy and that they want to lick, lap milk out of bowls. They want cat litter trays. They walk on all oh. fours and um, they've been like growling at new kids when they come into the school. <laughs> so I look this up, right? I was looking for it at the Department of Education. I mean, I'd growl at new kids as well. That sounds like Satan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Satan is actually your son, just he to is, clarify. Yeah. Oh, your son's fab. Um, so I, I looked this up to see if it was true. And the Department of Education, or whatever they're called now, um, they're saying, oh, you know, it's all just speculation. It's, it's not true and all the rest of it. I've actually personally now had three people contact me since Taco went out and said, I really want you to do an episode on this and highlight this problem because my child has come home and said that there's kids demanding that they have a bowl to lap milk out of and they're like jumping off fences and stuff like that. No. And because they identify as a fairy, which definitely uh, highlights their immaturity because mm -hmm. they don't really know what a fairy is, because they're identifying as this, they're making these demands and the schools don't know what to do with it. And they're like, so they're bending over backwards to actually provide these things for them. So I need to talk to these schools. Uh, being a fairy is not an identity. No. It's not an identity. It's not a gender. It's not an identity. Uh, like I said before, it's a subculture. Um, <clears throat> if they said they were therians, then they, they might have an argument, but they're not. the fairies. And actually what's happening, I think, is it's just when we were young at school, Okay, mine's a little bit longer, long ago than you, like. But when we were at school, you rebelled and you tried, you didn't know who you were. You tried on different identities, didn't mm -hmm. you? You know, I was a goth for ages. I was a punk most of my life, but, you know. Um, you try these different hats on. You don't really know who you are. You're experimenting things. Your hormones are all over the place. And, and back in our day, it was like, you know, just being rebellious, mm -hmm. wasn't it? And being a punk. Now you're demanding cat litter trays. <laughs> I mean, what the actual fuck? So what are you going to do, just... Have a piss in the corner in front of the whole class. Well, yeah, I suppose so. Because now kids don't even get changed for PE in front of each other. No. They have to spend the whole day in a PE kit. Yeah, it's mad that, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, what about the other kids in the class though? And the, and the school are saying, you know, you need to respect these kids who've got, you know. And I'm like, no, actually, no. I think you're just pandering to just a phase. It's a phase. They're not identifying at all. They're just taking the piss out of you. They're just taking the piss out of the education system. The fact that you're all too fucking terrified to actually speak your mind and say, no, you're not a fairy. You're a 13 year old boy or girl who's just experimenting with life and you can't have a cat litter tray. Now get to fucking detention. <laughs> this is what they should be but, saying. Like I want to know, are those parents giving them litter trays at home? Probably not. If they're acting up in school because they know they can get away with it. Is so, that like changing the cat's litter tray? Never mind my kids. Yeah, I'm not into cat litter trays. When I had a cat, they were outdoor cats. Yeah. When he was old at the end, he had to have a cat litter tray. I hated it. So there's no legal argument where that's concerned. So I don't know why the schools are trying to bend over backwards. Really, if no. you want to do all that shit outside and no. at home, that's fine. And I'm calling it shit and being disrespectful because I just think that it's gone a little bit mad. I totally respect pet play, totally respect fairies. There are adults who choose to do that to subcultures, what they enjoy. But 13, 14 year old kids who are saying the fairies and wanting a cat litter tray, that is just taking the mick. No, yeah. isn't it? And it is actually happening. So the Department of Education are just trying to cover up a problem because they don't know how to fucking deal with it. Well, I've just told you how. It's not an identity. Just, yeah, just she'll, oh, she'll sort it. I'll sort it all out. So let's move on to Therians. So Therians are not pet players and they're not fairies. So these are people, like I said before, who identify with and as an animal. And they do have animalistic traits and they connect with their Therian type, which is a species. Mm -hmm. uh, and the... the connect on a very deep level. It's not just, um, you know, uh, I feel like I need to go and sniff that dog's bum. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make light of this, but, you know, what an entertainment podcast. Um, no, they actually feel that animal on a very, very deep level. And some believe that it's a throwback from previous lives where they might have actually been, you know, a dog or a mouse or whatever. Yeah. And there's these sort of traits still in them. These animalistic traits are still there. They're hangovers from a previous life. And it normally emerges between the ages of 10 and 16. So through puberty, where a lot of things come out. So, you know, like I say, if these kids have said they were Therians, mm -hmm. they're the right age for this. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they fucking are. 
and they just don't know what the word is and they call themselves furries. Um, it just doesn't resonate with me that really. But the, it normally emerges around this age anyway. Um, and they can lead completely normal lives. But because they're young, when this often happens, they don't understand it. And because they don't know how to control these natural instincts, it'll come out at the most inopportune moments. Mm -hmm. So they have these sort of what they call shifts. And we're not saying like shape shifters. It's not like paranormal in that sense. But they can shift in a consciousness and it can be voluntary or involuntary. Now, voluntary, some people want to escape into that into that persona, if you like, into the Therian type, away from real life, into a into a a, a life where they feel free. Um, and they meditate into that. Other people, it's completely involuntary. And it reminds me a little bit of Tourette's. Mm -hmm. So if they get startled all of a sudden, they might like jump up onto a couch like a cat would. Or if they've hurt themselves, they might howl in pain like yeah. a dog would. And they can't help it. It just happens. Some people think it's like a neurodiversity thing. Mm -hmm. It could be some kind of a, a, a brain injury or you know something going on there. And like I say, other people think genuinely that it is a throwback from a previous life. And there's a website out there. Uh, just let me get that. It's etherian-guide.com. Um, and there's loads of really interesting information on there if anybody's interested in it. Um, and they, they talk quite seriously about shifting the different types of therians and to get support if you think that you are a therian. <clears throat> they can quite literally experience the world through the eyes and emotions of an animal. When, when they shift voluntarily through meditation, it can be controlled. And over time, they can like build up their experience until... Some people literally shift from human form in their mind directly into this animal and they open their eyes and you can literally see everything at, from a lower level like an animal would and everything. Some people don't fully shift. Some people still have the human instincts and the human um, intellectual thoughts, but see things as their animal. Other people don't really shift at all. They've just got an instinct and that's when it sometimes comes out involuntary when they're, they're scared. Yeah or they're frightened. Um, and when I was reading about this, at first I was like, this is just another like kooky thing. But no, and it's, it, it comes across as a very peaceful, harmonious, underground almost community. They don't put themselves out there that much because I don't think, maybe they're not ready or the world isn't ready. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, you're just completely nuts. Um, but I don't know, they just feel, it just feels like a very private, intimate world um, that they're quite happy to keep to themselves, actually. Yeah. If you want the information, it's out there, but they don't put it all over the place, you know. They don't have like, what what was it called, that, that fairy convention, fairy con. Fairy con, yeah. yeah. They don't have nothing like that. They're just normal human beings who work and live and have got families who've got this therian type. Um, and the the... There's it's like sort of like hierarchy almost. The most common Therian type um, are wolves. We were talking about wolves before. Um, and that's lycanthropy, isn't yeah. it? And obviously a, a lot of us believe that that's you know, completely mythical. But there are Therians who believe that they're wolves. Um, and they do, they do walk in packs and stuff like that. And it's a very close-knit community, the, the wolf Therian side of things. And a lot of people identify as wolves at first because they don't really know and they think that's what they should be, but they might actually then um, identify as something else further on down the line, like a, a Doberman or something, I don't know. And there's all there's other different types of shifting as well. There's this phantom shifting where people actually believe they can see their animal self forming around their body, which that sort of sits with the whole brain injury thing, maybe. Yeah. Since my brain injury, I don't necessarily see things that aren't there anymore but for the first couple of years I did and I had like this distorted sort of uh, vision of the world if you like it was weird I couldn't go through the the tunnel if you like yeah. driving couldn't do it Jimmy had to drive for 18 months weird anyway uh, the physical shift um, they believe that they can literally shape shift it is absolutely not possible physically or physiologically it's bullshit but some people believe that they can and other people believe that they shift through astral projection so they remain in their human form through astral projection. Their Therian soul, if you like, leaves their body and then they can enjoy the freedom of astral yeah. projection as their Therian. So what do you think of that? 
I find it all quite interesting, you know. Like, it makes me think of like Harry Potter and the um, what's it called? You know, they all have an animal. Patronus. Yeah, the Patronus. Yes. yes. And like each person's got their own. Yeah. Patronus could be anything. Mm. Um, it is quite interesting. Yeah, it is. Now, since I've been reading this, I am not a Therian, yeah. but. Uh, it was only recently it occurred to me that pretty much every single tattoo on my body, bar one, has got wings. Yeah. I've got a peacock here. I've got an owl, which comes across there. I've got a big um, phoenix at the top of my mm-hmm. shoulders. And I've got an American Indian angel with wings. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, in a previous life, I must have had wings. Yeah. Because I, I've never really thought about it, either that or it ties in with my free-spirited ways. I don't get tied down. Um, I'd like to travel a lot. And my other tattoo is all about wanderlust and travelling. Yeah. So it could be that in my subconscious, I'm a free spirit and I've travelled a lot and my tattoos represent all of that. Or on some fucking deep level, I'm like, I was an owl you in a previous life. <laughs> and, and I'm a fucking therian and I just haven't found it yet. So there you go. Wit a woo. Woohoo. I can't do an owl noise. Get your phone out. <laughs> well, since my phone broke, I haven't got it. So I've got I that had was this, not a fucking owl. No. I had this thing on my phone, this notification sound, and it was supposed to be an owl. And it sounded like a cuckoo. It didn't sound like that. <laughs> Owls do not make that noise. Yeah. Right, we are going to run on a little bit with this one, Dylan, um, because I do want to hear what Nant has got to say. And uh, we're recording two episodes today. I may as well not hide the fact. Um, and so we'll just make the next one a bit, little bit shorter. Um, so I'm going to leave me middle bit and see how much time we've got after Nant's. So from Therians, pet playing and furries. What have you got for us, kid? To my spirit animal. <gasps> Shut the fuck no, up. No, not really. Oh, <laughs> I thought we connected on a deep <laughs> level then, Nance. Well, I mean, kind of. So, obviously, big shock, Nancy's not my actual name. Nope. But I wanted to talk about Nancy. Okay. So, obviously, Sid and I go by Sid and Nancy. Yeah. Um, and this was just developed one day. Mm. And it was like that crazy that we sat and our parties were getting popular and we were getting more popular online and stuff and... At that point, we weren't as open as we are now. Mm. Um, And obviously we wanted to just have, we've got four kids. We wanted to have a layer of protection between like Mm. us being totally out there and our names and everything. Because we used to just go by our normal names. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I don't care if people know my name, Mm. but we've built this brand and it's all based on Sid and Nancy and the Sex Pistols. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were just sat there one day like, if we're going to make fake names, what are we, who are we going to be? Because you can literally be anyone. <laughs> Anything, yeah. So, and it was actually me who said Nancy first. Mm. Most people assume it's from the Sex Pistols, but it wasn't. It was, Nancy was from um, The Craft. You know, well, the fuck me. I thought it was always Sid and Nancy. No. So I chose Nancy first and then he went, oh my God. I can be Sid and we can be Sid and Nancy <laughs> and we can be the Sex Pistols. I can imagine the excitement. That was it from, from sitting in the living room. But no, my Nancy was initially from the craft. Oh, well, I never knew that. Never knew Fun that. Fun fact for you. Yeah. But let's talk about actual Nancy. So Nancy yeah. Spongen. Um, she was born on the 27th of February, 1958. And that was my granddad's birthday. Oh. Not 1958, but yeah. 27th of Feb. Um. So growing up and stuff, Nancy was always a bit of a cunt. <laughs> we can see where, yeah, identify where, her. where the um, spirit animals come You identify in. as a cunt. Yeah. Sometimes. Pretty much always, Most of to the be time. honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so even from like a really young kid, Nancy was violent. She was, she was really horrible to her sister. She had a sister called Susan, but she had like this really caring nature for her brother, mm. which is weird, isn't it? Mm. Um, and then she tried to kill her babysitter when she was growing up. Wow. Um, so all of these things started from when she was like four or five. Mm. And then when she got to 11, she was sent to boarding school because her parents had enough. So she was always a rebel then, wasn't she? Yeah. Rebel without a cause. Mm. Um, so she was sent off to boarding school by her parents because they just couldn't cope with their behaviour and stuff. And then she attempted suicide when she was like 
12 or 13, I think. And then she eventually got diagnosed with schizophrenia when she was 15. Yeah. Um, so when she like left boarding school, she actually graduated and stuff and she's done quite well, mm. um, considering she was such a rebel and, you know, had a hard time. And then she left home at 17 and moved to New York mm. and she became like a groupie for all of these bands. And she was always just chasing fame, um, doing whatever she could to like get in with the bands. Went round with like Aerosmith, the Ramones, New York Dolls. Wow. She went around. Yeah. And she just, she got in with all of them. And then she flew over to London when she was 17 and she met Sid. Sid Vicious. But did you know she actually, she didn't have her eyes on Sid to begin with. Mm. She wanted Johnny Rotten. Okay. And she got into bed with him and she said, I was reading this thing about her and apparently she was in bed with him for two nights, trying her on, trying her on. And he was just like, have none of it? No. Like, what? Fucking hell, what man in the history of never? I know. And so Sid was like her second choice. Oh. And then they started, obviously, this really tumultuous relationship that they had. Oh. And it, it's just that interesting to read about, like, um, so when she met them, they, they were always in the papers and stuff. And obviously this was before I was born. Mm. So, you know, I'm going from like what I've read online yeah. and stuff, but she was called Nauseous Nancy. <laughs> And you're Nancy Nipple Cripple. <laughs> Do you want a Nancy Nipple Cripple, Dylan? You haven't been introduced enough to Nancy's nails, have you? Oh, no. My, my, my girlfriend has long nails as well. Does she so cripple your nipple? I'm uh, pleading the fifth there, Vicky. Okay. I, I don't need the nails for the nipple cripples. Mm. <laughs> I'll just make you cry. Yeah, but she, um, she went all over the UK and stuff with Sid, ended up like just going on these rampages and stuff and she used to so it's a little bit unknown like some people say Sid was into heroin before mm. Nancy and a lot of people say no it was Nancy who she really enjoyed his like getting into trouble she loved watching him fight mm. she loved watching like all of this shit that he used to get up to and she kind of like got off on it yeah and I can't remember what it was called, but one of our earlier episodes, we talked about... Um, Hybristophilia. Yeah. Mm. And Sid and Nancy are very much like that. Very much. I've read a lot about Hybristophilia since, yeah. and they come up a lot yeah. when, they, when it's being described. Yeah. So she kind of like really encouraged all of this really mm. horrible behaviour. Yeah. It's probably her fault that he was like such a such a bad guy. Mm. But they, they got off on each other, didn't yeah, they? And definitely. I think it's just really interesting like people you know people identify me and said that I know I'm not saying like we make each other bad but I, I can get it because like he used before this life he was always in trouble mm. he was always in trouble with the police he couldn't go out without fighting yeah and he jokes and he says now he's like a lover not a fighter yeah but I think there is something really hot about watching your fella mm. like just well, you know, it's it's no... Uh, being a caveman like that. It's no secret that Jim's been the same. He's yeah. been a bad lad in the past. I They're don't very, mean, very like, similar, aren't they, Jim? I don't mean said. like Robin and all that, but, you know, he stood off for himself and, uh, you know, if somebody came at him, he'd take him down. Yeah. Like, know, Jim, Jim's really... got a, a scar from somebody throwing a bottle at him in yeah. a fight. There's something really nice, hot, about watching your man, like, being able to handle himself and mm. or, like, standing up for you. I remember this one time... Um, we laugh about it now, but when Sid and me was like first together, we'd been out, we'd been like having a few drinks and we went to a kebab shop. It was like three o'clock in the morning. As you do. Kebab at 3am. Yeah. Best ever. And this, this young lad, and he was only young, like he was like singing. He was dead, dead happy and drunk and he was singing in the queue. And I just laughed at him. But Sid wasn't stood with me. He was like over by the door or something or on his phone like he normally mm. is. And then this this guy turned around to me and he went, oh, sorry, love, you know, pissed. And that was all that Sid seen was this fella going, sorry. And before I knew it, this guy was pinned. Oh, my God. <laughs> pinned to the wall of the takeaway. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he was like, well, what's he saying sorry for? What did he do to you? <laughs> I was like, I was just laughing because he was singing. Oh, the poor guy. And he was like, oh. Sorry, mate. <laughs> that poor guy, little free spirit, had a little dance in the in the kebab shop and he was pinned up against the wall I by know. Sid. Just just for saying sorry. And you've got wet knickers. Yeah. 
Wow. I was like, let's go home, forget the kebab. I know, yeah. <laughs> Drop that kebab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, Sid and Nancy, they had like a 19 month relationship um, um, where the heroin addiction just kind of took over. And it's really sad. I grew up in a house of heroin mm, addiction and yeah. it's horrible. You wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, but yeah, so they, the Sex Pistols broke up mm. because they were so sick mm. of said shit. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they ended up moving back to New York and staying in the Hotel Chelsea. Um, and then obviously everyone knows Sid killed Nancy. Yeah. Did he kill Nancy? Nah. Do you not think so? No. I think he did. Do you? Yeah. I think Sid might kill me one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, I, I just think he did. Like, you know, I I haven't watched the film. Have you seen the film? No. Um, I'm kind of tempted to watch it, but then I think... I think you just, should. Yeah. I mean, I know it's now it's not your namesake. Here's me thinking that you're, a, you know, Nancy with the Sex Pistols. Um, but I think it'd be interesting still to, to yeah. watch. We tried watching the um, the thing on Disney. They made a series, didn't they, of Sid and Nancy? Yeah. Um, we got halfway through it and I was a bit like, just yeah. not making me want to watch it. No. But yeah, I need to watch the film. I found that a bit dull. Yeah. To be honest, two like colourful people. It yeah. was very dull. Yeah. Really. I was hoping for more. But yeah, there's um, reading about it, like obviously we'll never know for sure mm. what happens. But the the other theory is that they used to keep all of their money in a... Um, in a drawer. Yeah. And they think that Nancy found someone stealing from the drawer and confronted That's them. That's what I think. I think um, it was a robbery gone wrong. Yeah. I guess we'll just never know. Yeah. But obviously, while Sid was on bail, because he admitted it, didn't he? Yeah. He said, yeah, I've killed her. And then he didn't know. And then high on drugs he said all the time, he stabbed though. her by accident, but he didn't mean to kill her. Yeah. Um, and she was killed with his his knife, his yeah. knife, and she'd bought it like a few days earlier as a present. Yeah, I don't know. I it's don't a poor know. choice of a present, isn't it, when you're always I off your face on drugs? <laughs> not really an item you need lying around. But. I don't know. I don't know whether he did or not. I don't know. Mm. I'm thinking not. I think um, he was very high on drugs all the time, so, you know, the possibilities yeah. there. I don't know. I don't think it'd be convenient yeah. for me. So when he was on bail, the um, the Sex Pistols were going to release a Christmas album to yeah. cover all of his like his his core costs and everything. But obviously he, he topped himself before release then. Release an album to cover your core oh, no. costs, though. So <laughs> Happy Christmas! Roll, it? Get it out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Yeah, but obviously he um, he didn't kill himself. Kill himself, no. but he he did overdose. Yeah, it's accident. Really. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's uh, it's such like Death a common by thing. Adventure. Yeah. I think they call it such a common thing, thing isn't it that um yeah sex drugs and rock and roll oh, life absolutely yeah but what a life yeah you know if you're gonna live it if you're gonna have a drug fueled life you're just gonna live it to the max aren't yeah. you yeah i mean nancy was quoted wasn't she she always said she'd never live past 21 and yeah. she wanted to die before her looks faded and yeah yeah I mean, I don't know if she's seen some of the pictures of herself. Because... I know, yeah. It wasn't always... <laughs> that yeah. wasn't very glamorous. But Definitely not. Punk Definitely glamorous, not. maybe. Yeah. Sad story, really. Yeah. Let's hope Sid doesn't kill you, because I need you. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, Sid. All right. <laughs> yeah. Just just when the looks fade, the Botox wears off. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Did you know he, al he always wanted to be buried with Nancy? No. And... Nancy's well he wasn't allowed because Nancy was buried in a, in a Jewish and he wasn't cemetery Jewish. and he wasn't Jewish yeah, not allowed so he ended up being cremated um and Nancy's mum Deborah was like no mm. you, you're not staying with her I'm not, oh. I don't allow it and it was actually their friends broke him in and done it anyway not allowed to do that it's completely illegal get done for that apparently I think a lot of the stuff that they've done was illegal yeah so. totally totally yeah well there you go so there they are, rest, so, resting in peace together. I'm, I'm still in chaos. getting over the bombshell that like you're not Nancy from the, the Sex Pistols. No, we are the weirdos, Mr. Nancy. There you go. Wow. Thank you very much for that. I've learned something new about you. I thought yeah. I knew everything. Well, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Most things. I'm sure there's some dark secrets in there that I haven't discovered yet. <laughs> I always surprise myself sometimes still, still, so. That's good then. Keeping yourself on your toes. Yeah. 
Right, I am going to leave our middle bit this time, our dangly bit, because it's not even the middle. Um, and we'll do it next time because it's a good one. I want to do sure. it next time. I might even... I've got two. I might do two next. We'll see. Anyway. Right. So we're going to go. Because we've got another episode to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a Superman change. Or because, a Wonder Woman change. Yeah, it could just be like one long episode over two, wouldn't it? Like a double yeah. bill. It's a double bill. There you go. It's a double bill. I'm going to carry on in a minute. <laughs> so if you're binge watching us, put the kettle on. We'll see you in five. If not, we'll see you next week for part two. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And there we have it. Another day made better by listening to the Curators of Chaos. Thanks for dropping by. And if you enjoyed the show, we'd really appreciate you sharing your love for the Pat the Cell podcast with your friends. Don't forget, give us a follow on our socials. Maybe leave us some five-star reviews. And feel free to send us an email to medic at the Pat the Cell podcast. Or even interact with us on Facebook, Insta and our other socials. Because we love chatting to you. Be sure to stop by next week because, as Bowie says, I don't know where I'm going next, but I promise it won't be boring. Catch you soon.